SpaceX engineers and the CEO Elon Musk are desperate to land on Mars, as he has just revealed about the new warp drive Starship, which is going to help them reach the Red Planet sooner than expected. The Starship's technology has not been fully developed yet, but they are shooting firmly into the far future. So how is SpaceX going to do it? And what have SpaceX and the National Aeronautics Space Administration been cooking up? Let's find out. Hey guys, welcome back to our channel, Elon Musk Evolution, where we tell you the latest news about Elon Musk and his multi-billion dollar companies. In today's video, we are going to talk about what Elon Musk just revealed about the most powerful rocket engine ever. If you want to find out more, then stay with us until the end of the video. Also, before we start the video, don't forget to hit the like, subscribe to our channel, and ring the bell icon for more amazing videos. And let's get started. Starship is the massive next-generation rocket SpaceX is developing to launch cargo and people on missions to the moon and Mars. The company is testing prototypes at a facility in southern Texas and has flown multiple short test flights. SpaceX currently manufactures rocket engines, Dragon Cargo, some Starlink communication satellites, and its famous Falcon 9 rocket boosters. The new SpaceX base, which is currently being used for its new project, is located in Boca Chica, Texas. The launch site was originally intended to support launchers of a Falcon 9 and Falcon Heavy launch vehicles, but a change of plans occurred back in 2018 when SpaceX announced that the launch site will also be used for manufacturing SpaceX's next-generation launch vehicle, also referred to as Starship. On one of many occasions, Elon Musk gave a solid reason for building Boca Chica, Texas, which was to build a massive fleet to make Mars habitable, make life multiplanetary. But accomplishing to build such a historic fleet would require a giant leap forward in spacecraft development, because colonizing Mars with only one starship wouldn't be enough. Now let's first talk about the anatomy of these starships. A starship consists of two main segments, the upper stage, which is the starship itself, and the lower stage, which is the booster, or the super heavy. It is approximately 230 feet tall. As for the landing part, the SpaceX engineers have planned to land the booster in a very unique and interesting way. The new idea of making space flights better and cheaper are increasing. So, to understand the new landing concept used in the Super Heavy by SpaceX, we first need to understand the Starship and its booster. SpaceX has developed a gigantic rocket booster, which will be attached to the Starship spacecraft in order to propel it into space. The Starship spacecraft and the Super Heavy boosters are collectively known as Starship, which is a fully reusable transportation system. Now, what is Elon Musk planning to do with its Super Rocket? Well, the CEO has planned to catch the stainless steel booster safely back to Earth with its fully reusable launch system, which will then be reused again to launch more Starship spacecrafts into space. The Super Heavy booster, after successfully moving the Starship through the thickest layers of the atmosphere, will detach from it and come to Earth to be reused for another mission. Another most interesting thing about this Starship is that it will have the ability to be refueled in space, which is a critical step for SpaceX, but it will make it possible to make journeys to more places like Mars and the Moon after the completion of the first task. So is it true that Super Heavy will not have any landing legs? And how is it going to land without legs? To make their vision of multiple flights per day to space, they need to reuse their ships to decrease building costs. Not adding landing legs to the Super Heavy saves a lot of resources, and Musk shared his viewpoint saying that the landing legs add more mass and cost to the Starship. That is why he considered removing them, and without landing legs, the rocket is ready to fly in under an hour. When Musk was asked if his decision to eliminate the legs was due to high stress the vehicle would experience upon landing, he replied, Legs would certainly work, but best part is no part. Best step is no step. Now coming to the part where we finally catch Super Heavy. We got some updates recently about the Super Heavy, and they are quite amazing. According to reports on the new working strategy used by the company, is instead of using regular rocket landing methods, Super Heavy will be caught using the launch tower arm. Elon Musk mentioned his plan in one of his tweets which said, we're going to try and catch the Super Heavy booster with the launch tower arms, using the grid fins to take the load. This is truly an incredible step toward Elon Musk's plan of making life multiplanetary, and the company's next major step in developing Starship is launching to orbit. But before that, SpaceX is planning to integrate a new super technology into its Starship, which is called Warp Drive, the most powerful rocket engine ever. A warp drive, or a drive that allows a Starship to travel faster than light, 
is a fictitious superluminal spacecraft propulsion engine that has appeared in science fiction works, most notably Star Trek, and is the topic of continuing physics study. John W. Campbell first proposed the notion of warp drive in the 1957 novel Islands of Space, and the Star Trek series popularized it. Basically, a warp drive is a fictitious application of the Alcubierre drive, which is a theoretical solution to the general theory of relativity's field equations. The Alcubierre drive, or Alcubierre warp drive, is a speculative warp drive idea proposed by theoretical physicist Miguel Alcubierre during his PhD study at the University of Wales, Cardiff. This new technology is based on a solution of Einstein's field equations in general relativity by which a spacecraft could achieve apparent faster-than-light travel if a configurable energy density field lower than that of a vacuum could be created. So by using this engine, instead of traveling faster than light inside a local reference frame, a spaceship would traverse distances by compressing space in front of it and expanding space behind it, resulting in effective faster-than-light travel. It has been observed that within regular space-time, objects cannot accelerate to the speed of light. So the Alcubierre drive alters space around an item to allow it to reach its target faster than light than it would in normal space without violating any physical rules. According to Einstein's special relativity theory, solid things with non-zero rust mass, unlike photons, cannot move at the speed of light. The difficulty with a material thing traveling faster than light is that it would need an ultimate amount of kinetic energy to go at that speed of light. Although this new technology is believed to be phenomenal, the notion of space warp has been challenged as illogical, as it has been linked to a number of other rubber science concepts that do not fit into our present knowledge of physics, such as anti-gravity and negative mass. As you obviously know, the cosmos is enormous, so could we build a ship that goes faster than light? Harold White, a National Aeronautics Space Administration scientist and the lead of the Advanced Propulsion Team, was in charge of the space agency's attempts to see if faster-than-light warp drive is viable, and if so, how can we build one? So he created a model and concept for a starship that closely resembles the Enterprise from Star Trek. White directed an interferometer experiment that was intended to assess such an impact at the nanoscale. The data received from the experiment was equivocal, and the scientists highlighted that while a non-zero or non-configuring impact was seen, the difference may have been generated by other factors. In other words, more data is required. However, failure of the experiment does not rule out the possibility of a warp bubble, as it's also conceivable that we're attempting to detect them in an inefficient manner. Nonetheless, the fact that we're still trying to figure out if a warp bubble can develop shows how much work has to be done before we can use the effect for space travel. Now, could Elon Musk, the founder of SpaceX and Tesla, become a real-life Zefram Cochran, the fictional Star Trek investor of Warp Drive? Neil deGrasse Tyson, an astronomer and scientific figure, appears to believe so. And this is it for today, guys. What are your thoughts on today's video? Do you think the new Warp Drive is as powerful as Musk claims? Share with us in the comments below. And thank you for watching.